hello hello we are season three episode two and y'all seen her before in season one but we about to switch it up spice it up and introduce the doctor christina myers so tell us a little more of who you are the new you because (laughs) old you was the old you just the new you so let's let's dive in we in the season of newness so there it is right (laughs) well first of all thank you queen shaniga for inviting me back i'm so excited season three what a blessing yes i'm now dr christina myers um i am an assistant professor at michigan state university in the journalism department So I had the opportunity to teach these young minds about the world of journalism and help them navigate that as well. And in my position, research is very important. And so part of my research, I study the Black experience in mass communication, specifically in news coverage and sports commentary, as well as music lyrics. And I really explore the dynamics of the intersections between race and racism and how my people, Black people, are depicted in those spaces. Okay. And not only are you kind of diving into that research, but you're also a tenure professor. And how how is that impact as a whole? Yeah, yeah uh such a blessing to have opportunity to be in this space. I think first of all, the biggest thing for me has been the impact on my students. To have students that look like me come up to me and say, we are so grateful to see you in this space. Um, We're so grateful to learn from you. And I know what that feels like. You know, I, it was not until my first semester of my PhD program that I had a black professor. So I understand what seeing someone that looks like me in a space like that means. Um, It's so funny because, you know, I've had professors, of course, before, but to really understand how scholarship, right, how research can really make an impact in our society and, um, through my role as a tenure track professor, that's my primary role, right, is my research, is seeing how I can use my work to make an impact not only in the Michigan State community, not only in Michigan, but across this country, right? So we can really have honest discussions about how issues of race and racism are personified in the media content, which seems to lean Um, disproportionately into negative stereotypes of who we are as a people, right? And so my goal, my job in this role as a researcher is to try to confront that, to show and illustrate it's there and dismantle those perceptions. Mm. And it's not just based off one genre. It's, It's vast. It's vast. Yeah. So we consume content in various forms right it's not only the news it's not only looking at my own work as a journalist but it's also about the music that we consume the lyrics what are the lyrics actually saying how does it speak to our experiences right as well as in sport you know the three areas I love the most music sports and the news and so those are my three passion areas and to have the opportunity to explore that through research is a blessing so it's not only the research right it's about making those things tangible right making those issues of looking at the content we consume in a critical way bringing that into the classroom so I can help teach the next generation of journalists a new way to approach their work so that they are being even more cognizant of how we can make sure those individuals who have been systemically silenced in our society have a voice. They can be the voice for those individuals who have long been voiceless. Okay, and just change the narrative. Change the narrative, so important. Right, so, okay. You've been saying a lot of new, saying a lot of change the narratives. So (laughs) what is your word for 2023? Oh, girl, that's a good question. A hot topic. Oh, that is so good. I feel like there are so many words that have just been in my spirit lately, like newness, right? And I feel like I know that I am in this season where God is just doing big things. He's always been doing big things, but it seems like every step that I've been on this journey with him, he continues to blow my mind. And so... In terms of a word, it's hard to pin it down to a word, but a phrase, I'll just say, my arms are open to receive what you have for me. Oh, that's going to be my phrase. 
That's and a- so in doing that, that means I have to position myself and be ready to receive what he has for me. So you I, have to be open. I have to be open. That's a good word right there, my sister. I have to be open. Yeah. I have to prepare myself and I have to do the work, right? Right. Because faith without works is dead. Right. So I have to do my part because it's a partnership. So he's already revealed himself. He's already showing out. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm gonna just continue to trust. There we go. 2023, trust. Trust you more than I have in this space, in this okay. space. I have to do a little bit more. And so as long as I trust him, because he hasn't failed me yet, if I continue to trust him, I know that I'm I'm good. It's not gonna be an easy journey. It's never easy because when you're doing it, you know who we work, who we who has us, who has our back, but this journey isn't an easy one, but because of who I belong to, I know I'm gonna be okay. Okay. I'm gonna give you accountable. Come on. Keep, please, life. sis, keep me accountable when I text you. <laughs> <laughs> when I call you up. And so you trusting the process, trusting God even more. Mm-hmm. So our audience is going to be one of the first to know, but you are stepping into being, coming a host for, I'm going to let you just, you know, talk about it for Jamil Hill book tour <laughs> in Michigan. Um, And how are you preparing for this and embracing this new opportunity yeah uh great question I will say this um we were talking about positioning yourself Mm -hmm. and oftentimes when you are in a new space it is the trick of the enemy for you to doubt yourself to doubt your abilities or to even question like just because you're feeling overwhelmed right I'm I'm coming from a graduate program I am a tenure track professor, meaning my clock has started, meaning that there are certain things I have to do as a professor, including publishing research papers, service. There's certain things I have to do on a clock during a certain time period in order to be promoted, right? In order to have the job security and become a full professor. Um, So all of those mixing, you know, all of that going on, as well as being a professor, all of the new things that are happening can be overwhelming at times. And so for me, all that to say is there were moments where I was feeling a little overwhelmed, right? Yeah. Naturally, right? To Because it's all new things, all great things, all a blessing, but it's all happening all at once. All that to say is having an opportunity to be in the space like Michigan State, where I have the privilege to meet, work alongside incredible alumni like Jamel Hill and so many others I'm just so grateful. You know, I say this all the time, your gifts will make room for you. And the opportunity that they have given me to have a conversation with Jamel about her her new book that came out, her memoir, Uphill, um, that opportunity as well as others I've been presented simply for being in that space mm-hmm. is further evidence that God orchestrates everything. And he's allowing me, giving me the space and the opportunity to exercise the gift of being a journalist and having a conversation about race and the intersection of sports. All the things I love to research about, I have the opportunity to do um, with this conversation I will be having with Jamel Hill coming up. So all I'd say is I'm grateful for Michigan State. I'm grateful to be in that place, in that space because they are giving me room to be me, which is a blessing. Yeah, be unapologetic and be the entire doctor that you are oh yes <laughs> that's really exciting and you talked about just um embracing this new season this new um environment that you are in and how are you navigating the area of self-care and newness new city new job mm-hmm. new opportunities all things new, being a little overwhelmed. How are you navigating that with just really taking time for yourself? Absolutely. Um, It's prioritizing Mm self-care. And for me, the biggest thing I can do for myself in terms of self-care is just diving deeper into the word, spending more time with God. You know, I 
I have a routine of, of course, prayer, devotion, have my gospel going in the morning. Like I have that routine. But what I realized was I have to get a a little bit outside of the routine and spend more time in resting in his presence, right? It's one thing to read the scripture and spend time, you know, kind of studying a little bit, but allow that time and that space to just be still and allow God to speak to me, right? Just just rest yeah. in his presence. And so that has been the primary thing for me is digging a little bit deeper in my faith walk, right? And that is something that I am prioritizing even more now um, in this season of my life. And, and it's been it's been helping me, right? It's helping me in those moments when I start to feel overwhelmed. I remind myself of my favorite scripture. My Lord is my the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom should I fear? Okay. Lord, strength in my life, whom should I be afraid? Right. And so it's using the word to minister to myself, to encourage myself. And that personally, by far, out of all the self-care things, I'm a girly girl, so I like to do my nails and do all the things. Hey, I see the blue nails. You see it right. Is it popping today? <laughs> but that within itself has helped me in all aspects of my life, spiritual, mental, physical. You know, of course, I'm, I'm doing all the things to take care of this temple in all ways. And, you know, really diving into it's the word sexy, of God. Like you always say. Yes. <laughs> You gave me that. I'm going to keep it forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, just spending time in the word and just prioritize. And that's the thing, you know, one of my friends told me that we write down everything in my agenda. I'm a person that likes to write things down and cross it off my list. I write down every meeting. I'll even write down my lectures. I know when I lecture, but I still write it down. Why not write down self-care? What you are actually going to do for yourself. So yeah. I have to ask myself, Christina, how are you taking care of yourself today? and name it and prioritize it that's good that is so good um write it down name it mm -hmm. get a little organized you know mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> absolutely whatever you have to do to take care of your your heart your mind your spirit you have to take care of yourself because if I'm not taking care of myself I cannot be the best professor I cannot be the best researcher I want to be the best journalist I want to be because I'm empty. I have to fill myself up and allow others to fill me up as well. And I'm grateful for the village. You're in my village. Hey, village is everything. Absolutely. Extra support. And so what, uh, how can people connect with you now and just follow up with you? Yes. Well, on Twitter, I'm at C Loren Myers, C L A R U. Girl, I know how to spell my name. C L A U R E N M Y E R S. You know how to spell her name, y'all. I know how to spell my name, and I almost pulled my phone out. Like, what is my handle? Uh, <laughs> but no, that's the best way to to follow me on Twitter. And then, of course, I'm a part of Michigan State University, and any of my research that is out will be under my affiliate with my university. So, yeah, that's the best way to get in touch with me. Yes, and connect with her. And thank you again, Dr. Myers. All right now. Don't play with me. I'm still getting used to that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> hey,